एज ए आई इंटेलिजेंस एट द एज आई एम डॉक्टर राजीव मिश्रा वर्किंग एज प्रोफेसर इन द डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ कंप्यूटर साइंस एंड इंजीनियरिंग एट इंडियन इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ टेक्नोलॉजी पटना सो इन एज ए आई वी आर गोइंग टू सी इंटेलिजेंट एज वर्सेस एज इंटेलिजेंस देर आर टू डिफरेंट कॉन्सेप्ट सो एज कंप्यूटिंग इज ग्रेजुअली being combined with artificial intelligence benefiting each other in terms of realization of artificial intelligence at the edge that is called edge ai so edge ai can be classified into two categories that is the edge intelligence that is ei and intelligent edge ie so here you can see both these things are depicted in this particular figure intelligent edge that is ie and intelligent edge ei and together it is called edge ai so again here it is represented edge ai is combined of intelligent edge ie and edge intelligence to be specific edge intelligence here brings the ai services from the cloud to the edge as much as possible so here you can see it brings the cloud services brings the ai services from the cloud to the edge as much as possible that is edge intelligence thus enabling various distributed low latency and reliable intelligent services considering that ai is functionally necessary for the quick analysis of huge volumes of data and extracting insights there exists a strong demand to integrate the edge computing and ai which gives rise to the edge intelligence so edge intelligence studies how to run ai model on the edge so it is a framework for training and inference of ai model within the device edge and cloud continuum so it aims at extracting insights from massive and distributed as data with the satisfaction of the algorithm performance cost privacy reliability efficiency etc therefore it can be interpreted as ai on the edge so intelligent edge on the other side aims to incorporate ai into the edge for dynamic adaptive edge maintenance and management so intelligent edge focuses on providing a better solution to constraint optimization problem in the edge computing with the help of effective ai technologies hence ai is used to endo edge with more intelligence and optimality therefore it can be understood as ai for the edge or intelligence enabled edge computing traditionally ai services such as training and inferencing were performed on the cloud however it was not suitable for the task that requires real time analysis and quick decision making such as autonomous vehicle or a self driving car furthermore moving the high volume of data acquired by the large number of sensors and iot often becomes inefficient and time consuming in such cases edge computing can play a crucial role in enabling intelligent services close to the users or the source or at, at the end devices notable of the benefits of the edge computing in this regard can be noted as ultra low latency and response times significantly lower compared to the cloud it enables real time data analysis and decision making the second benefit is the data reduction it reduces 
the volume of data to be transferred in the network upstream and uses bandwidth efficiently therefore optimizes the cost as well. Data is locally generated and can be cached on the edge and it also increases the network throughput. Third is enhanced privacy and security. Data is processed locally preserving privacy and reducing security threats. Reliability. Reliability or offline functionality can provide services without the help of a cloud devices can function even when the connection to the cloud or the internet is not available or a down. Scalability. Edge is scalable by design it is scales well with the amount of data to be processed the edge. Now edge intelligence for IOTs. Now recapitulate the internet of thing is a network that connects uniquely identifiable things to the internet. In other words, IoT is a network of internet connected devices embedded in everyday objects enabling sending and receiving data and providing control. So the things have sensing actuation and may have programmability capabilities as well. The main task of IoT networks becomes gathering information from the things, send the information back and forth, store and aggregate, analyze, take, take decisions. So let us explain Internet of Things again. So the Internet of Things is a network that connects uniquely identifiable things to the internet. In other words, IoT is a network of internet connected devices embedded in everyday objects enabling sending and receiving data and provide control. Things have sensing actuation and may have programmability capabilities as well. The sensing actuating covers everything from legacy industrial devices to robotics camera system, water level detectors, air quality sensors, accelerometers and heart rate monitors. Through identification and sensing, information about the things can be collected that is called telemetry and the state of the things can be changed from anywhere and any time that is actuation and the control. The gathered data is analyzed to acquire a more in-depth knowledge of the things actually composed of geographically distributed and heterogeneous things. The main task of IoT networks are gather the information from the things that is monitoring the state information, control enforcement, send information back and forth remote location between the edge and the cloud store and aggregate information and analyze the information to improve the system knowledge and take decisions that is in a human assisted or autonomous manner. So in traditional cloud based IoT architecture we have the following several heterogeneous things that is the sensors and actuators may be geographically distributed across various regions then multiple multiple gateways located geographically close to the things, gateways directly interact with the things and dispatch the data to and from the internet that is to the cloud. So the cloud that is the server side remote location application are stored in the cloud and all the data management analytics or a business logic related tasks are performed on the cloud. So again the cloud that is the server side remote applications are stored in the cloud and all the data management analytics or the business logic related tasks are performed on the cloud. Now what is the gateway? So in an IoT gateway plays a crucial role in facilitating communication between the end devices and the central cloud. The primary purpose of an IoT gateway is to manage and optimize data flow between the device and the cloud. An IoT gateway facilitates protocol translation by acting as intermediary between IoT devices that use different communication protocols depending on their manufacturers 
and specific functionalities, gateway can translate and bridge communication between the devices using different protocol. This allows for integration of diverse devices within an IoT ecosystem. So, gateways can also provide a pre-processing, security, scalability, service discovery, geolocation, billing services, etc. For example, in a, in a gateway pre-processing, we have data buffering that is temporarily store the data to wait for connectivity or to increase efficiency, data efficiency. That is to read the temperature every one seconds, but only per minute average is sent. Data aggregation that is read water level from different silos, but only the same is sent data filtering that is send temperature values only if it is greater than 25 degree Celsius. If there is no gateway things have to send and receive the data on its own the constraint devices will have reduced set of capabilities. For example, no security since cryptography would be CPU intensive no data buffering filtering or aggregation no programmability. For example, a pump might contain many sensors and actuator that feed data into the data aggregation device that also digitizes the data. This device might be physically attached to a pump, the adjacent gateway device or the server would then process the data. Intelligent gateways can build on additional basic gateways functionality by adding such capabilities as analytics, malware protection and data management services. So, the first evolution wave that was an IoT computing architecture, most of the computation happens at the cloud, only the gateways are deployed close to the things. Gateways perform few and simple things, however, the cloud models are not designed for volume, variety and velocity of the data that IoT generates. Second evolution wave that is IoT edge computing architecture that is gateway is relatively powerful and possibly intelligent on premise edge servers are located close to the things, but between gateways and the cloud. Complex analytical tasks are now performed on premise before sending data to the cloud. For example, in a, in a predictive maintenance task for an industrial pump rather than passing on the new vibration data for the pumps you could aggregate and convert the data analyze it and send only the projections as to when each device will fail or need the service. Here is another example you might use machine learning at the edge to scan for anomalies that identify impending maintenance problems that require immediate attention. So, when you could use visualization technology to present that information using easy to understand dashboards, maps or graphs, highly integrated compute systems such as hyper converged infrastructure are identical are ideally suited to these tasks because they are relatively fast and easy to deploy and manage remotely. Therefore, most of the AI ML enabled applications are now deployed at the edge instead of the cloud. The edge layer delivers three essential capabilities, local data processing that is the huge volume of data is collected at the stream edge, vehicles, ships, factory, floors, etcetera. In order to deal with the increasing amount of data generated by the sensors, most of the business logic is now deployed at the edge layer instead of the cloud to ensure low latency and faster response times. Filter data transfer to the cloud, thousands of millions of devices across geographic area are generating data. Only a subset of the data generated by the sensors is sent to the cloud after aggregating and filtering the data at the edge. This edge computing approach significantly saves the bandwidth and cloud storage. Faster decision making when it is necessary to analyze and act on the data promptly in milliseconds since most of the decision making is now taking advantage of the artificial intelligence, the edge layer is becoming the perfect destination for deploying the machine learning model trained in the cloud. So, the Internet of Things platform plays a crucial role in deployment, management and analysis of an IoT devices and the data. 
This platform serves as middleware that connects the physical world of devices to the digital world of software applications, enabling seamless communication, data processing and control. So, IoT platform lie between the things that is the devices and the business applications. That is the IoT platform allows the device management. That is the functionality. The IoT platforms pro provide tools for registering, provisioning, managing devices. This includes capabilities for firmware updates, remote monitoring and diagnosis, diagnostics. Now, to connect devices to gather the information from enabling enable the security mechanism like TLS, SSL, SSL for secure device registration. Registration now to secure communication with the devices and application management involves protocols like MQTT, COAP, or HTTP for communication. These communication protocols are lightweight and efficient to accommodate the constraints of IoT devices. To manage the devices to control their behavior integration with the existing enterprises system, databases and other third party systems is a crucial aspects of IoT platform. APIs that is the RESTful, MQTT etc facilitate integration and standards like OData or open API may be employed. Message brokers and middleware solutions are also common for system integration. It enables managing the entire life cycle of devices for long term IoT deployments. To analyze data with AI ML, it includes tools for real time data processing, analytics and visualization. This involves filtering, aggregating and analyzing data streams from multiple devices. Now to build applications also interacting with CRM and ERP applications. Customer Relations Management CRM is a technology for managing all your company's relationships and interaction with the customer and potential customers. Enterprise Resource Planning which is a type of business management software to scale that is IoT platform must be able to scale horizontally to accommodate an increasing number of devices and the data volume. Containerization that is the Docker. Orchestration, orchestration that is Kubernetes and microservice architecture contribute to the scalability of IoT platform. Now several IoT platforms are now being provided by different cloud providers such as Amazon Web Services that is AWS IoT, Microsoft Azure IoT, MindSphere by Siemens, Edgex Foundry, Cloud, Google Cloud Platform, ThinkWork IoT platform and many more. So Azure IoT is a platform provided by the Microsoft. It encompasses both platform as a service and software as a service component depending on the specific services with, within the Azure IoT suite. So the major component of Azure IoT platform are the devices. They represent the component required to run on IoT device. Azure IoT supports a large range of devices such as microcontrollers. Running Azure RT OS and Azure Sphere. Azure RT OS that is Azure real time operating system is an embedded development suite including a small but powerful operating system for resource constraint devices. Azure RT OS provides the most popular 32 bit microcontroller embedded development tools Azure Sphere is a development suite that includes Azure OS, Azure Sphere OS along with some other tools. Developer board like MX chip and Raspberry Pi Azure IoT also supports small servers, smart servers, gateways capable of running custom code using IoT SDKs. Ingestion and provisioning. So Azure IoT Hub is a cloud gateway service that can securely connect and manage, and manage devices. Azure IoT Hub is a core platform as a service offering within Azure IoT. 
it is a scalable and fully managed service that facilitates bidirectional communication between iot application and devices it manages iot hub acts as a message broker handling device to cloud and cloud to the device communication as well as device management and authentication azure iot hub device provisioning service enables automatic just in time provisioning that helps to register a large number of devices in a secure and scalable manner it provides secure communication and complete control through specific authentication for each device hub allows sending both the telemetry data from the devices to the cloud and commands to change the devices behavior from the cloud the hub has built in routing functionality with rules to automatically dispatch manages dispatch messages it also stores the configuration of devices using metadata and state information which can be queried from upstream so iot hub supports mqp https protocol azure iot central azure iot central is a saas solution that simplifies the creation deployment management of iot applications provides pre-built templates and tools for quickly creating iot solution without the need for expensive coding or infrastructure management azure iot central is more focused on providing a ready to use saas experience for iot applications azure digital twin is a pass that enables virtual models of the real world a digital twin is a virtual model of a real environment that is driven with the data from the business systems and iot devices example building infrastructure or entire cities these digital twin provides a virtual counterpart to the physical entities allowing for real time monitoring analysis and simulation of their behavior now when devices are connected to the cloud there are several services that assist with ingestion ingesting data at a high level there are three ways to process data hot path warm path and a cold path the paths differ in their requirement latency and data access hot path analyzes the data in near real time it as it arrives hot path telemetry must be processed with a very low latency the hot path typically uses the stream processing engine the output of the stream processing might trigger an alert or be written to a structured format that can be queried using analytical tools services such as azure stream analytics are often used for stream processing we can also use tools like apache kafka and databricks for stream processing and functionality the warm path the warm path analyzes the data that can accommodate longer delays for more detailed processing tools that are more in line with the warm path such as data lake factory data factory synapse data bricks use per tier azure functions example azure data explorer is used for storing and analyzing large volumes of data cold path the cold path performs batch processing at at longer intervals like hourly or daily cold path typically operates over large volume of data which can be stored in azure data lake storage which is commonly used for storing and analyzing massive amounts of so the results from the cold path don't need to be run timely in a in the hot or a warm path cold path is more batch oriented hot path will process the message as it hits the system while cold path really process the message at and and at and as they accumulate on the system and rather being triggered by the message itself what it allows for is is data to be accumulated over the period of time and then typically on trigger that is timer based it will then take whatever data it has accumulated and process that data in a batch we can use we can use azure machine learning or azure data bricks to analyze cold data azure machine learning azure ml is a pass offering within the microsoft azure platform 
Azure ML provides a set of cloud-based services and tools designed to simplify the process of building, training, and deploying machine learning models. Azure Databricks is a, is a PaaS offering. It is a cloud-based Apache Spark and analytics platform provided by Microsoft Azure in collaboration with Databricks. Azure Databricks simplifies the process of setting up, setting up, configuring, and managing Apache Spark clusters for big data processing and analytics. So the takeaway from this is that hot path is real time. Warm path is going to be more often smaller workloads that are going to be rating on a smaller time scales like 5 minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes or an hour and cold path is going to be a larger workloads that are going to be operating over longer period of time. It, it might be 5 minutes if, if there is a lots of data. Um, it could be an hour, it could be a day or it can be a week. So management and, and the business integration. Business integration might include storing information messages, raising alarms, sending email, SMS messages, integrating and business applications such as customer relationship management and enterprise resource planning. So many services are provided by Azure for management and business integration such as Power BI for modeling and visualizing the data and using the AI to make the data driven decisions. Azure Maps for creating location aware web and mobile application by using geospatial APIs, SDKs and services like search map, routing, tracking. Azure Cognitive Search provides a search service over varied, varied types of content. Cognitive search includes indexing, AI enrichment and querying capabilities. Azure app service helps to deploy web application in a scalable way. Finally, the IoT Edge. Azure IoT Edge is a service to deploy and manage applications over the remote devices in their locations. Azure IoT Edge is hybrid solution that combines both PaaS and on-premise Capabilities, it, it extends Azure IoT service and analytics to the edge devices allowing processing and analysis of the data closer to the source to drive better business insights and enable offline decision making. Azure IoT Edge enables the deployment of a containerized workloads to edge devices, enhancing edge computing capabilities. Azure IoT Edge is a part of Azure IoT Hub which is a managed service hosted in the cloud that acts as a central message hub for communication between an application and its attached devices. For example, on the edge of a network, we have a local area network and bunch of devices that are emitting elementary and events that are ultimately sent back to the cloud. However, in some cases, you might want to put some kind of preprocessor in place that will do some filtering and aggregation and some other enhancements on the data closer to where the devices are. For example, we can run anomaly detection workloads at the edge to respond as quickly as possible to the emergencies happening on the production line. If we want to reduce bandwidth costs and avoid transferring terabytes of raw data, you can clean and aggregate the data locally and then only send the insights to the cloud for analysis. So Azure IoT Edge comprises of three components. The first one is called Edge Modules, are in the unit of execution implemented as the Docker compatible containers. IoT Edge modules can run business logic at the edge and are capable of running other Azure services, third party services or any custom code. These services or the code can be deployed as modules on the edge devices and execute locally on those devices. You can develop custom IoT models in several languages with SDKs for Python, Node.js, C Sharp, C Hash, Java, C and so on. Azure IoT Edge Marketplace also offers 
some uh, pre-built modules. Modules can be configured to communicate with each other to create a pipeline for data processing. Modules can run offline if needed. Every module is made up of four conceptual elements. First is the an image package containing the software module and instance unit of computation that runs the image on a device. It is started by IoT runtime identity, information about credentials and permission associated with each module, a twin JSON document that stores meta data regarding the status of a module and configuration. Second is called IoT edge runtime runs on, here you can see IoT edge runtime runs on each IoT um, edge device and manages the runtime and communication for the modules deployed on to each device. The IoT runtime is a collection of programs that run a device that turns a device into an IoT edge device. The IoT edge runtime is responsible for the following functions on the IoT edge device. Install and update workloads. on the device, maintain security standards on the device, ensure IoT modules are always running, report the module health to the cloud for remote monitoring, manage communication between downstream devices and IoT as devices, modules on an IoT as device, an IoT as device and the cloud IoT device, IoT as device. The responsibilities of the IoT Edge runtime falls into two categories, communication and module management. These two roles are performed by two components. The Edge, IoT Edge agent, which deploys and monitors the modules, it pulls down the container orchestration manifest from the cloud. So, the IoT Edge knows which modules to run, it is responsible for it. Instantiate, instantiating modules ensuring that they continue to run and report the status of the modules back to the IoT hub, IoT edge hub. Module manages inter module communication and communication between the device and Azure IoT hub in the cloud messages route from one module to the next with JSON configuration IoT edge encrypts the stream real time industrial data to the IoT hub by using AMQP or MQTT protocols. It acts as a local proxy for IoT hub by exposing the same protocol endpoints as IoT hub. This consistency means that the clients can connect to the IoT edge runtime just as they would do to IoT hub. IoT edge hub is not a full version of IoT hub running locally. IoT edge hub silently degrades, delegates some task to the IoT hub. For example, IoT edge hub automatically downloads authorization information from IoT hub on its first connection to enable the device to connect. After the first connection established authorization information is cached locally by IoT Edge Hub. Future connection from that device are authorized without having to download the authorization information from the cloud again. Both the agent and the Edge Hub are modules just like any other module running on an IoT on IoT Edge device. They are sometimes called as a runtime modules. The runtimes once installed turns the device into an, uh, into an S device and gives them many features such as ensures that the modules are running and report modules health to the, to the cloud for monitoring, manages communication between the S device and normal device upstream the cloud with the cloud and downstream with the machine. Third component is called IoT Edge cloud interface, enables you to monitor and manage overall life cycle at a scale for a diverse set of devices which could be geographically started is challenging to manage the software life cycle for millions of IoT devices that are often mixed 
and models or on a diverse location workloads are created and configured for a particular type of device deployed to all the devices and monitored to catch any misbehavior, misbehaving devices. These activity can't be done on a per device basis, but must be done at a scale. Consider the case of deploying complex event processing or a machine learning on the edge device. If you want to implement machine learning on the edge device, you first train the model on the cloud. After training the model, you need to deploy the trained model on a diverse range of uh, edge devices often across the geography. Once deployed, these models will run often offline on the device. You would also need to update the model periodically by encapsulating the model in the Docker compatible containers IoT edge can manage the endpoints, can manage the end to end cycle of the deployment for machine learning on IoT. IoT edge runtime and the cloud interface can monitor the status of the machine learning modules. In the absence of IoT edge, the developer would need to create these added functionality maintaining again to reduce the bandwidth usage IoT edge hub optimizes many actual connections are made to the cloud. Uh, IoT edge hub takes the logical connection from the modules or downstream devices and combine them to for a single physical connection to the cloud. Client think that they own their, they have their own connections to the cloud even though they are all being sent over the same connection. The IoT Edge Hub can either use AMQP or MQTT communi to communicate upstream to the cloud independently from the protocols used by downstream devices. IoT Edge Hub can determine whether it is connected to the cloud IoT hub. If the connection is lost, IoT Edge Hub saves the message and updates locally. Once the connection is established, it syncs all the data. So Azure IoT platform is internally organized in three levels of abstraction layers. First is called things. That is the data generated from the devices that is sensors and actuators has brief processing through the edge applications and is sent through some connectivity service to the next layer. The generated data is going to be acquired and ingested into the cloud. The devices are further connected to the edge and the edge acts as the gateway abstracting the device that are at the lowest level of spectrum and that actually connects to the cloud. Then second is the insight. In this stage, Second is the insights. In this stage, the data is processed and is stored in a different kind of storage or the data is aggregated and analyzed through stream analytics and machine learning tool to derive some insights. Now on the cloud side, we have two touch points for the edge or the devices. One is called device registry that is the primary used for onboarding the devices and is repository of the devices. Each every devices that is connected to the IoT platform has an identity within the device registry, the authentication, authorization and metadata of the devices is stored in the device registry. Consider an enterprise corporate directory scenario where the device registry called ADAP of the devices. You can query to get the loss, lots of metadata and useful information about any devices connected to the platform. The public cloud pass also called IoT pass exposes the data ingestion and points. Uh, this is high velocity, high throughput endpoint where the sensor gets streamed, sensor data gets streamed. This typically could be Kafka or event hubs or Amazon. Kinesis or Google Cloud Publisher subscriber interface. So it is a pipeline that basically acquires the data and passes to the data processing pipeline. Now both the device registry and the data ingestion endpoints are connected to the message routing policy. A message routing policy which is defined which will define how this data is going to be split between the real time processing and the batch processing and how the raw data is stored and how the process and how the process data is going to be stored. So this is the place where you actually create the rules engine 
or you basically create some kind of policy that is going to define how the data flows. For example, some data need to be batch process where you first collect then process. In some cases you need data in to perform the real time analytics. Now the batch processing layer which is also called a cold path analytics and stream analytics layer which is also called as a hot path analytics. In other words, when you are performing queries on the data as it comes that is called the hot path analysis and if you are storing the data and processing the data over the period is called cold path analysis. Now both raw data which is going to be which is going or about to go to either the batch or a stream processing is first persisted in a time series database or an unstructured database and even the output from the batch data processing and stream analytics get persisted in some databases. Then we have uh, the storage and database for persisting the raw sensor data and or process data. Actions. In this layer, the insights are visualized into the graphs and dashboards that can help companies to take actions, operational decisions, business decisions, etc. That is the data from the data storage is fast and we can apply the machine learning algorithm to train the model which can then perform tasks such as anomaly detection, predictive analytics from the data that is coming. Finally, all of that is fed to an enterprise business intelligence platform. that runs the dashboard and alerts the entire visualization happens on a business intelligence layer. Machine learning at the edge, a typical machine learning flow has four stages. The first is called data preparation, acquiring and preparing the data for the training. The second is model preparation that is the building and training machine learning models. And third is the model deployment, deploying the models on the edge runtime. Fourth is monitoring that is monitoring and maintaining machine learning models. So, this is called machine learning model life cycle which is shown over here. The data uh, is used uh, for model uh, training and then it will deploy the model, monitor it, analyze the performance and retrain the model and then it will also use the updated data and this cycle goes on. So, the so, let us see uh, the general machine learning model deployment, development and deploying process follows a cyclical iterative pattern. A typical machine learning flow has four stages as shown here in the figure. The first one is called data preparation, in, uh, involves data acquisition, data cleaning and labeling, data exploration and third is the data sets. Now, second is called model preparation. So, model preparation is used for building and training the machine learning models, building the machine learning models using the frameworks like PyTorch, TensorFlow, Scikit-Learn, CNTK, etc. Training and validating the models on the stored data sets. Training is usually performed on the cloud where computation resources are available in terms of CPU, GPU, TPU. Cloud can provide ample resources. Uh, to train the large models, large machine learning models such as uh, such as a deep neural network. Trained models are stored in a model repositories for the model registry on the cloud to be used later for inferencing. Third is called model deployment. So, inferencing at the edge, deploying the trained model on the edge runtime to bring to bridge the gap between the cloud and the edge innovations in the chip offers built in accelerator that is speed model, speed up the model inferencing at the edge. Chip manufacturer Qualcomm, NVIDIA, ARM have launched several chip that speed up the execution of machine learning enabled applications. These modern processors contain GPU on the edge devices which can improve the performance of the deep learning model by accelerating the inference process. To deploy a machine learning first it need to be converted to work with the particular IoT edge runtime. The edge runtime can be a docker based system that can deploy machine learning model as a container. So, model conversion usually optimize uh, includes optimization like faster inferencing, smaller model footprint. The process differs for 
uh, various frameworks such as TF Light, Snapdragon, Neural Processing Engine, and Media Deep Stream, which can makes it possible to run hardware accelerated inferencing at the edge. Finally, the monitoring and maintenance, monitoring analysis, tracking the model usage, analyze resource utilization, model related data error analysis, uh, then update, improve, and improve auditing. Uh, cost control. So, influencing at the edge. So, a, so uh, AI on the edge is one of the most popular edge scenarios implementation of this scenario which includes image classification, object detection, body, face, gesture analysis. This architecture describes how to use IoT edge to support these scenarios, we can improve AI accuracy by updating AI model, but in some scenarios, as devices network environment is in good. For example, in the power and the oil industries, equipments can be located in a, in a remote places like desert or the ocean. In such cases, IoT edge module twins are used to implement dynamically loaded AI models. Module twins are a JSON document that store the module in uh, module state information, including metadata configuration. IoT, Azure IoT Hub maintains the module twins for each module connected to the IoT. Module twins store modules. Now, the concept of a twin comes from the idea that each IoT device or the module has a digital twin in the cloud. Now, we have seen that IoT edge modules are based on Docker containers. An image for an IoT edge module in an AI environment typically has a size of at least 1, G, 1 GB. So, in, so, incrementally updating the AI model is important as a narrow bandwidth network. Now, the idea is to create an IoT AI module can load machine learning and deep learning model framework like TensorFlow Lite or Open Network, Open Neural Network Exchange, ONNX based AI models. So, the edge model can be enabled with, with a web API and the solution will include that enable AI inferencing on the edge, minimize network cost, create and manage AI model repository. Then the next is the data flow that is marked in a green circle here in the slides. So, the AI model is uploaded to the Azure blob storage or, or the web service. The model can be pre trained that we have already seen. Also, Azure IoT Hub syncs the model sync the device module twins automatically with AI information and the loader module monitors the update of the module twins via the API and the loader saves the AI model in the shared local storage and the lo loader module loads the AI module from, from the local storage via the TensorFlow Lite. The loader module starts the web API that receives the input data via the post request and returns the result JSON file. To update the AI model, you can upload the new version of the to the blob storage and sync the device module twins again with the incremental update. There is no need to update the whole IoT edge module. This solution and IoT edge module is used to download an, and an AI module model and then enable the machine learning inference. So, example scenarios for how the edge machine learning, how the edge machine learning platform Azure IoT provides services in terms of SaaS. Once the edge device is connected to the hub, module is responsible for capturing and processing the data. The data can be captured using Kafka, that is high volume or, sim or simple, that is telemetry. So, developing and registering the modules which are container images will have the 
will create it that is data processing and transformation inside module and action module that we have already explained. So, the container images are stored in some container registry. The, these container images are ready to be deployed at the edge. Second step is to create the workload description or the, or the development manifestation. And third step is to create the target, target and IoT edge runtime on edge device. Fourth step is the edge runtime now performs machine learning. So, conclusion in this lecture we discussed about enabling edge intelligence for the IoT. We discussed about the Azure IoT edge platform that provides various services that enable AI workloads such as machine learning, deep learning models to be deployed at the edge using containerized runtime. Thank you.